Christ Way Church welcomes you. Let's hear what God has to say through Pastor Anu. Praise God. Good morning. Greetings to all in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. We all face difficulties look like they never change. Any time God is about to take us to the next level, you are going to face opposition. There will be new battles fight new obstacles to overcome seems like the more we pray the worse it gets we don't see any sign of things improving it's easy to get discouraged and think why all these things are happening jesus said if you know the truth the truth will set you free so if you can understand if you realize what's going on in our life and if you can understand god is in control of our life and everything has a purpose and if you keep doing what is right you will see another level of victory and another level of success so never give up don't be discouraged keep doing what is right today i'm going to talk to you about our soul prosperity our title is you will prosper in all things as your soul prosper In 3 John 1:2 Apostle John wrote Beloved I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in good health just as your soul prosper John's prayer was that the physical health and all other things for his beloved saint might prosper in the same way that his spiritual health is prospering the word prosperity today nearly always referred to the material wealth of a man but john's prayer is that our prosperity in all things and physical health might prosper in the same way as our spiritual health and the spiritual prosperity happens this was clearly contradicts the twisted teaching of certain prosperity teachers and faith healers who insist that without faith you will not be healed or god has not decided god has not intended to heal certain people all these are wrong teaching they are not correct biblically in christ your prosperity outside in christ your prosperity in your business your education in your life in your ministry and overall what you do and for your bodily health that is equal to the proportion of your soul prosperity we are going to learn about soul prosperity so when we are born again baptized we are saved our soul is saved which part of us is saved our soul is saved okay and salvation is an ongoing process for our soul which is made up of mind will and emotion our soul is in a continuous process of being saved so this contradicts people's preaching of one saved is always saved i'll show you just two verses here james 121 james says put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls this is talking to the saved people you should receive the word that are implanted this is given to the saved souls only in the saved souls the words are implanted isn't it so you should receive them and obey them live accordingly then you may be able to save your souls and another verse is paul is telling in first corinthians 9:27 i discipline my body and keep it under control lest after preaching to others i myself should be disqualified even paul is not sure about his salvation but here all the believers are so sure they will reach heaven because they are born again baptized and they are going to a church they are reading bible they are praying they are worshiping but how is your soul is your soul saved it is in a continuous process day by day our soul should be prospering till we die then only we will reach heaven paul himself is telling i keep my body under control is your body under control is your mind under control is your will under control 
and the believers who are not living without any self control are so sure that they will reach him that's the reason i will always tell show me the verses i will explain to you don't believe in wrong gospel because jesus paid a price to save our soul jesus paid a price to take us to heaven jesus paid a price to give us a good life eh? so don't believe in wrong gospel and ruin your life and ruin your salvation hallelujah your soul has to prosper in order for the rest of your life to prosper you need to know what to do so that your soul may prosper soul will prosper first of all let us have a quick review about the soul of our heart soul of every man we are made up of spirit soul and body spirit is used to connect to god and body is used to connect the world around us and soul is connect to ourselves our soul is made up of mind will and emotion in simplest terms the mind is the thinker the will is the chooser and the emotion is our feeler three parts we are not knowing all these but these things are happening inside we will be thinking we will have emotion we will be deciding then all these things are happening inside neuroscientists say that when we experience trauma troubles stress it significantly affects our mind and emotion when we experience distress sorrow pain that cause our soul to fracture and thereby cause sickness in our body if so if i want to live a healthy life i can live isn't it it is in our hand hmm? we read in proverb 15:13 it says by sorrow of the heart the spirit is crushed by sorrow of the heart we are all carrying sorrows pain from morning till night if you are carrying the sorrow understand you have a crushed spirit to love at your brain and proverb 18:14 says a man's spirit will endure sickness but a crushed spirit who can bear nobody can you and me can not bear a crushed spirit it is so hurtful it is so painful at the same time when we are in painful situation you should understand something is happening in our brain also brain is getting damaged tension hormone is filling our brain cortisol hmm? so jesus told joy of the salvation is your strength we should know how to live in the joy of salvation every day in the midst of all our problems as your soul prosper you may prosper in all things and be in good health that is our verses so this verses tells us that the prosperity of our internal world is directly connected to our external world what happens inside of us that will affect outside let me explain to you the spiritual truth with an example that is written in the bible we read in bible in one occasion jesus was on a boat with his disciples when a storm came the disciples were panicking while jesus was completely at peace and he was sleeping disciples in their fear they woke him up and said do you not care that we are going to drown master you are sleeping what's happening eh you are so happily you are so peacefully sleeping so they woke him up jesus woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm jesus said to the disciples why are you so afraid have you still no faith mark 4 38 through 14 hmm? you know this story this is not a story this is an incident happened hallelujah this is to be the life that god wants each of his children to live it is god's desire and will for us not to be discouraged or panic in the face of our adversity and troubles because for the state of our internal world will affect our external please understand this what is happening in inside of you 
will affect your external world. This is a spiritual truth. You go and reason and reason and reason and reason and experience, then you will understand. Otherwise, you will disagree with me. So, now, let's understand the science of our restless soul. Let's understand the science of our sixth soul. Restless soul means sixth soul. First sign is emotional inconsistency. Emotional inconsistency is when your emotions are not in proportion to the adversity and the situations that you face. This is the sign that unhealthy soul you have. This is the sign that though you are in Christ, your soul is not prospering. If your soul prospers, only you will reach heaven, my dear friends, understand? Believers, your soul has to be prospering. Then only you can see some good things in your life. Then only you have good health. Otherwise, you are going to fall in sickness, definitely. So, soul prosperity is a must. You know that in this world, you need prosperity. Where? financially. So you are trying hard, working hard. Money is to be there in the bank. Isn't it? So you are working towards the prosperity of your wealth. Believers should understand at the same time, yes, work for the prosperity of your wealth. There is no problem. You need money. At the same time, you have to work for the soul prosperity. Hallelujah. So Emotions are external expressions of what is happening inside. Your face, the way you react, that is what you are inside. That is your inside, that is your internal world. When you react to any situation, check how you are reacting, that is your soul. Psalms 42, 11, Psalmist wrote, Why my soul are you downcast? Why are you so distressed within me? Yes, naturally, when a situation comes, when we face with adversity, we all become upset, we will be irritated, we will be angry, we will be panicked, we will be fearful. That is true. But, dear believers, being in Christ, know how to control these emotions. That's why you are here today. Why you are here today? Every day I will tell you, every sermon I will tell you, every Sunday morning. You are here in a church. Believers are there in a church for what? To get some religious feeling. You don't get anything with that religious feeling. That will go away. Your soul should prosper. Mind is our asset. Anything happens to the mind, gone. Because your mind is proper so you can walk, you can work and you can live. Something happens to your mind, gone. You don't remember anything. You will work weirdly. Isn't it? You can't do anything properly. So mind is our asset. If our mind is prospering, we will prosper in everything and in good health, every areas of our life. Wealth will be improving. Hmm? So what people will do? Believers after coming to Christ also, their mind is after financial prosperity only. Hmm? They want to accumulate wealth after wealth after wealth. So they hardly do any spiritual activity. Somehow they are coming and sitting on the chair on Sunday morning. That itself is a great thing for them. How wisdom, my dear friends. Without having spiritual prosperity or the prosperity in your soul, your financial prosperity is of no use. Let me tell you. I will always tell you this. This truth. You will be sick. You will have no peace. You will be panicked. With every problem, for everything you are fearful, for everything you are worried, you are anxious, you have no peace. That is your Christian life. Understand your soul is not prospering. Paul is telling, I discipline my body, I keep my body under control so that I will not be disqualified. Who will preach all these scriptures, believers? It is not in your Bible. Once saved is always saved. How can anybody teach that? Hmm? Who will hear such messages? Who wants to follow that? Isn't it? Hallelujah. So all these emotions will come. But you should learn in Christ how to control them. Trust in God. Hallelujah. Second sign of your soul sickness. Restless soul. You are constantly overwhelmed. 
how a person is overwhelmed because you have too much work morning till evening you are in the office 24 hours work no time to sleep money 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 earning money so what tension tension money is required you know extra work they are working or for whatever they are engaged so much of work 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 because they are only aiming at financial prosperity or those who are study full time study 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 come for prayer no tomorrow exam or next month exam no time don't disturb me hmm? don't call me i'm very busy so prosperity has to happen every day encourage each other every day lest sin will harden your heart hmm? so how much every day spiritual work how you are doing the physical work is required you should understand hallelujah so if you are that much busy in everything your soul is in peril you should be intentional at such time to calm your soul relive the way you manage your time and work don't take too much work and pressure your soul they may be earning a lot the people who are earning a lot you see their work time hardly i sleep sir monthly how much you are earning 3 lakhs just 3 lakhs <laughs> no sleep huh? are you earning this much of money they are not able to understand the head of the family is leading the people to where hmm? he himself is trust will he give any peace to the family he is the head of the family he is irritated because too much of work he is too much in anger hmm? you see this is how believers are also living hallelujah third one so sickness the sign of your soul sickness you are always in the fear of your future you are not living for today jesus is telling live today worry about today but you are always worrying about tomorrow day after tomorrow then this month and next year you are thinking about your future looking at the present situation you yourself will predict what is going to happen tomorrow and in future this is your sign of soul sickness you have to be healed after hearing this message this is your soul sickness sign of a soul sickness jesus told today's trouble is enough think about today if you are working for today your tomorrow day after after years will be prosperous that's what jesus said you are becoming more smart and wise than jesus christ god himself that's the reason many people will tell i'll tell don't worry sister pray and leave it to god if i don't worry about my family members pastor who will worry i have to worry for my daughter i have to worry for my son about my family worry keep worry you have a soul sickness hmm you are not going anywhere like in rocking chair you are moving up and down up and down up and down in rocking chair you can go anywhere no today people don't have time to go anywhere by bus or train they are flying such people are in rocking chair no time but in their life journey they are traveling in a rocking chair but this world have no time and they are flying 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 now how do you develop a prosperous soul you have to develop you have to develop your soul sickness has to be healed otherwise you are not reaching anywhere you are in rocking chair in your spiritual life journey you are in rocking chair you are not moving anywhere and you are wondering why nothing good is happening to me you are wondering why financial prosperity is not happening to me why my health is not improving why i am always sick why i am always sad why nothing good is happening to you why you are in rocking chair spiritual rocking chair that's the reason hallelujah so you must ensure 
to prosper your soul you must ensure each part of your soul to be prosper that is mind will and emotion your soul prosperity means your mental prosperity you will be mentally doing well hallelujah and your spiritual journey is an inner journey to the prosperity of your soul how do you know that you are spiritually progressing inside inside you are calm inside you should not chumma think 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 thinking 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 of people are all in rocking chair hmm? should come to the conclusion conclusion of what god says jesus told to love him with all our mind isn't it so when you are obeying this commandment of loving god with all your mind your soul will be prospering hallelujah our thoughts and feelings and our old memories keep coming to us back isn't it today we are living but we are living with the experiences or what people have done many years back those memories in those memories we are living that is our mind hmm? you have to capture them and give up and obey christ that is more important so we keep living out, out our present life out of what happened or out of what we have experienced long ago because of that no peace today we are not able to forget those things or forgive the people we keep remembering what bad things people have done and thinking about them and having bitterness anger and forgiveness inside hmm? your soul is prospering no that's the reason we are asked to renew our mind romans 12:2 and renewing the mind is a continual process every day you have to renew the mind because old things will come and accumulate in our heart we have to keep renewing the renewal of our mind is to learn how to think and how not to keep the wrong things in our mind that is renewing the mind if you are not a person who is not renewing the mind you cannot have soul prosperity hallelujah proverb 4:23 says keep your heart with all vigilance from it flows the springs of life that means be careful how you think because your thoughts run your life life flows from your heart if you have a clean heart your life will be peaceful and you will have prosperity in every area of your life one of the reasons why we get mentally fatigued is because of a constant battle that is happening in our heart a mental battle is happening in our heart 24 hours what battle war about wrong and right good and bad so how do you win that battle or how do you know that you are winning the battle or you are losing your battle if you are living in peace you are winning the battle but if you are living in conflict fear worry anxiety dear friends you are losing your everyday battle if you are a believer by losing your everyday battle your soul is not prospering for everyone this battle is there you should know to capture the wrong thoughts and give up and obey christ all these things are written for whom only about baptism and prayer is written in the bible hmm? what did we read in james 121 you should receive in meekness the words that is implanted in our heart so that your soul will be saved so these words you should know and you should not entertain wrong thoughts hallelujah by changing our mind to right thoughts only our circumstances will change and we want god to take away our problems pains and sorrows and sufferings and sickness and sadness isn't it hmm? we are praying for all our problems to be taken away but what god wants us god wants us to work on our mind and god is telling us be peaceful trust me and be peaceful trust me and be peaceful how the joy joy of the salvation believers are you able to understand hmm? we are praying for the prosperity of all other areas how is your mind how is your heart is there peace in your heart see 
Jesus and disciples were in the sea. A big storm came and hit the boat. Jesus was peacefully sleeping. He didn't know all this happened. He knew. He knew that nothing is going to happen. He was peaceful. But disciples were panicking. They were so anxious. They were so fearful. But Jesus was peaceful in his heart and rebuked the storm. That means to pray, to rebuke, our heart should be peaceful. Your prayer in panicking heart will not hurt above. Your prayer or your rebuke in fearful heart will not work. You cannot chase the Satan away or will not heal your sickness. You need a peaceful heart. What will hinder your peaceful heart? Your anxiety, your worry, lack of faith. All these are because of lack of faith. Then unforgiveness, anger, bitterness. When you are keeping all unforgiveness, anger, bitterness, do you have a peaceful heart? No. Can we live always peacefully? Yes. How? Settle all this. It is not that we are holy. Not completely we are holy. But it is an ongoing process. Hmm? So when you have peace and pray, something will happen to your house. Something will happen to your family. Something will happen to your sickness. Something will happen to your problems. But if you don't have peace in your heart and pray, all those prayers are big zero. So, this many years, how did you pray? All waste, isn't it? You have wasted your time in prayers. You had only some feeling that you have prayed. But you had anger stored in your heart, revenge stored in your heart, jealousy stored in your heart. You had worries, fear in your heart. With all that, we should not pray or we should not rebuke anything. Dear friends, understand. Calm mind. That doesn't mean I don't have storms outside. Yes, I have storms outside. Without storms, we cannot travel in this world. Why don't you understand this truth? Why you are panicking with every storm? Why you are distressed with every valley? That is the way. On our way till we die, we all have to go to valley. Valley is the stepping stone to the mountain. If you do right, but if you don't do right, if you have no self-control, valley will become deep, deep, dark valley for you. You will be all negative. All together that negative power will flow in you. And you will pass that negative power to your family and to all the sisters and brothers and to pastor also. How a pastor will live with this much of negative energy? Just think, my dear friends. I do need some positive energy from you. Am I getting any positive energy from you? You know that. How difficult is a doctor's life? Doctor has to see what? Every day, blood, sickness, sickness. What will be storing in a doctor's brain, you know? Same way pastors also. Believers will not improve. Believers only will pray. They will never grow in self-control. They don't want to obey. They are so selfish. At the same time, they have tremendous faith. That's the reason I will tell, leave the church and go back to your old life. That is better. If you have decided not to improve, that is the better life. Don't be in between. You should be in the extreme end. Either come closer to God or go away from God. Is it not a gospel? Yes, this is the gospel. Let people come to contradict me. I will explain. Dear friends, come closer to God through your mind. Your mind. Capture all wrong thoughts. Give up and obey Christ. Eh? What happens? Your mind will be always peaceful. You will have joy. 
such life if you are living understand things are going better things will happen better if your life is not like that understand you are leading your personal life and your family life to peril hmm? how is your life do you have the joy of salvation do you have peace hmm? i also go through everything more than what you people go through i go through God has given me a gift of teaching and preaching. I have to invest a lot of time and thoughts to write three or four pages my messages. Isn't it? I need clear mind to write certain things. Chuma, I cannot write something and come and preach before you. You can check my every teaching from the day one I started. in every meeting every message i challenge you if you have my old video or audio initial days we never had video we had but audios you can listen them listen those messages and tell me if you don't grow through that messages my name is not anu how i can do that for whose name whom i am accountable my dear friends to the senior pastor yes my senior pastor is god almighty understand you should be accountable to god each one of you that is your ministry through you how many people will reach heaven do you reach heaven first of all you are worried about other people what a beautiful life god has given us What a beautiful life God has called us to live. If you leave Christianity, if you don't come to church, if you don't hear all these things you think your life is going to be beautiful, something different. Tell me. You may be thinking your friends outside are enjoying the life. Hmm? You are thinking without Jesus Christ without all these principles of god you think they are enjoying life no in every trouble some situation they are panic they are panic because they don't have mental stability their brain is getting damaged so they are trouble that trouble that give it to everyone in the family you are a family member what are you giving to your family peace or conflict peace or war you just think personally i'm asking you tell me because what you have only you can give if you don't have peace how can you give peace if you have only conflict and war inside you can only give to the family conflict how shameful is believers life isn't it what a beautiful life god has called because of the selfishness and lack of understanding or whatever maybe pride people are living in peril hallelujah so an unmanaged mind leads to tension and conflict a managed mind leads to tranquility and confidence confidence we need in life you know confidence do you have confidence in hebrews 10:35 it's written the confidence that you have in christ you should not lose do you have confidence in christ your confidence should be in christ whatever you do if you are a student if you are working somewhere or whoever you are you should have confidence whatever comes my god is there with me he will take care of all my problems yes i am going through problems after problems but so what my god is there that is the confidence do you have if your soul is not prospering you will never ever have this confidence hallelujah so if you don't learn how to manage our mind and if you don't learn to change our mind according to the word of god and will of god we will suffer lot of stress tension fear when daily that's your life is that your life as a child of god dear friends understand your soul is not prospering where are you today and you are not thinking about the soul prosperity also 
what you are thinking about financial prosperity am i right when your soul is in peril believers are only thinking about their financial prosperity where is the gospel and where the children of god are living hallelujah so if you don't learn to capture all our negative sinful thoughts and give up and obey christ as second corinthians 10:5 says we will never ever 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 enjoy peace why because your mind is not proper your mind is not saved how do you know you are a saved soul because you are coming to church are you saved let me ask you this question this morning are you saved you said yes sister as pastor i am saved oh i remember my spiritual birthday many will celebrate their baptism day good all these are good i am not telling that it's not good they will write and keep a certificate they are all good you remember and you go to church regularly hmm? you read bible you praise god so you are saved no salvation is a continuous process salvation is a daily process where that process should happen self control self control where in your mind in your desire in your will in your emotion emotion is very closer to us emotions are like breathing air that much we have how much we breathe air that much we have emotion isn't it Hallelujah I love my God because of this today I am living because I am saved I am in the process of salvation so I have life I am giving life to the others that is the testimony of a child of God you should have life you are the salt of this world do you have salt yes sister at home today only I bought one kg tata salt flawless salt at home it's there but do you have salt Hmm? do you have last week so clearly i have explained especially you all should listen kannada message please today itself those who are not heard last week kannada message please hear god has spoken so many points to us hmm? you will not even hear them no time <laughs> if you don't hear these messages your souls will not prosper why we are doing all these kelsa why you have invested so much of money for camera all these things you tell me hmm? we want to start a youtube channel no all these truth you people know but still you don't hear the messages keep hearing the more you hear your soul will have prosperity god will be talking to you for your soul prosperity hallelujah so when people hurt or anger us when problems seem overwhelming it's easy to get caught in negative thoughts when we think negative thoughts we feel overall negative and we feel that life is lost isn't it eh so what do you do you have to deal with your mind with the word of god philippians 4 6 and 7 state be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to god hmm? what you will do your problems you will make the whole area known still god will not know isn't it all relatives will know your problems but still god will not know why you don't pray allave nimma problem ellarigu gottide nimma maneyargella gottide area avarigu gottide devarigu matra gottilla yake prarthane madalla so do not be anxious for anything but with thanksgiving let your request be made known to god then what happens you get the peace for our soul to prosper we should not be anxious fearful without all these things you should pray immediately and give your worries and concern to god giving thanks why giving thanks when you give thanks you know that i have somebody to take care of when you have someone to love and care you feel confidence you feel good isn't it that's what we feel in christ Hallelujah and Psalms 1:2 says 
Blessed is the man who delight in the commandments of God and meditate day and night. Do you delight in the laws of God? Believers, believers don't even read the Bible. They know only to pray. With high palpitation, they start praying even if they pray. Or full revenge, anger, bitterness, they will pray. How do we pray? Blessed is the man who delight in the commands of God and meditate day and night. Meditation on the word of God will calm our mind. The word of God is the food for our soul. To prosper our soul, you have to feed on your soul. Your body needs food, isn't it? How many times a day you eat food? How many snacks you will eat in between? Three principal meals in between snacks. Sunday, finished. Everything is stored in the fridge. Yesterday only everything is stored in the fridge and came. Isn't it? To go and make good biryani. Then, dessert. What all? Sunday is maja to your body. Then, how about your soul food? Tell me. Your soul is starving. When your soul is starving, you are filling your stomach with everything. You are not able to understand your soul is starving. How? You are not feeding your soul with the word of God. You are in anger. You are in worry. You are in tension. Everything is going good. But still, your mind is not proper. Listen to this scripture. My explanation may surprise some believers. I want all the believers to hear this. At least take this cutting for shots and upload in YouTube. Mark 8, 36, Jesus said, What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world? People are after gaining money, fame, position. Okay, world is that. How about the believers? Hmm? He's asking, you are depositing money. You are depositing money. You are interested in education. You have so much of education. You are earning money. But if you are losing your soul, what is the use of all this? He is asking. So, our soul can be lost, isn't it? What does it mean to losing our soul? We have a scripture in 1 Corinthians 11.30 also. If you go home and read, that is talking about if we are not taking Holy Communion, worthy of it. Worthy of it, what will happen? Believers will come on Holy Communion Day, they will take Holy Communion and go, Lord, forgive me. That's all. No commitment, nothing. And even if they commit, they don't do what they commit. So what happens? They are weak. They are sick, they are dead, they will be dying spiritually. Hmm? Spiritually they are weak, they are sick and they are dying. This is what happening to the whole world. They are tired of this life, tired are you when I die. No joy inside. Eh? Because of that sickness, many, many, many sicknesses and their spirit is dying, their soul is dying. Soul has to be fed. Bread sustains the body. The word of God sustains our soul. Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Matthew 4.4 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Every word, not some words. Every word. That is the reason you have to study the word and receive them and obey. Hallelujah. So if you are not feeding your soul with the word of God, if you don't hunger for God, if you don't hunger for the word of God, if you don't hunger for the righteousness, you cannot feed. This also I have taught you, isn't it? Now all of us are hungry, waiting for the breakfast. Hmm? That hunger will lead you to eat. Some of you are not hungry. You have some disease, isn't it? So don't want, I am not feeling hungry. Brain damage. Because soul is not prospering. That's all. If your soul is prospering, you will be hungry. You are 
well. So, how do you eat food? Now breakfast, then lunch. Hmm? Sunday, Sunday lunch, then Sunday dinner. Hmm? Because you are hungry. But if you don't have hunger, do you eat all these meals? No, you can't. Even if tasty food is there, you can't eat because your stomach says don't want. So, what will lead us to food? Hunger, spiritually also same. You should hunger for righteousness. That's the reason Jesus Christ was told, those who are hunger and thirst for righteousness, come to me. Jesus called only such people. Jesus didn't tell that all of you come and take baptism huh? and keep note of your baptism day and enjoy and do nothing. He didn't say, what was our calling? He said, those who are hungry and thirsty, come. Hmm? So, unless you are hungry, unless you are thirsty, I don't have time to explain how explained many times you can go home and listen about that sermon. Do you have hunger to be like Jesus Christ? Do you hunger to control your anger, irritation, jealousy? Don't keep blaming. Nina nana kopa madisida. Nina karna nana kopa the lidini. Nina olevala the day, nana olevala. Olevene. That is your testimony, believers. Your kopa will damage your brain. Because of your kopa, your anger. You are damaging family members' brain. Last week I have explained to you, especially in Kannada meeting, God has explained so well. Your anger is giving brain damage to the family. That's what I have explained. Your anger. Smile. Talk to the people properly. Why this oppo face? Pastor, you only explained. You are the salt of this world, you said. You are. Nivu, e propensa the uppu. Uppila in the ya. Yaki upputare tida. Uppunima, her day the lead peku. Nima her day the lupidre. Nivu Santo Shavagi Naditiri. General was Santo Shakurti. Illadre. Menacella puddy. All got a full menacella puddy tumpi de. Nimago menacella tumpa karak tai de. Aden you could do. This is true, my dear friends, understand. Control your anchor. Learn to talk pleasingly. Let your speech be full of grace and seasoned with salt. Did you write it on your wall after hearing this message? I am going to come to your houses. Let me see. That won't be there. But many decorations will be there. Since long time I have not come to your houses. Corona stopped me. Till Corona used to come and visit your houses. Now visiting is all through the phone. Online visiting, I am doing. Now everything is online. Corona made us online. So hardly I visit your families. I am not visiting anyone's family now. I am praying, I am visiting through online. So I don't know what is there in your house. Please write that. Colossians 4 6. Let your speech be full of grace. And seasoned with salt. Hmm? Smiling, learn. We don't have all these by birth. That's why we came to Christ. In our blood, that is not there. We should learn. We should practice. Hallelujah. So, unless you hunger for righteousness, you cannot be righteous. Are you hungry? Are you hungry to have self control? If you are not hungry, how much ever you meditate those words, I am sick, I am sick, I am like Jesus Christ. Many of you are meditating like this. I have control, I have control, I am like Jesus Christ. Do you hunger for that? Hallelujah. So you are starving of your soul day by day, that will cause your soul to die one day. You lose vitality, energy, hope, fire and at the same time, did you hear me? If you are not having the soul prosperity, you will not have vitality, energy, hope and fire. At the same time, what you will have? Fear, anxiety, anger. All these emotions will be dwelling inside of you. Bitter. Now, but 
if your soul gets prosper you will have prosperity in everything peace will be there so lastly mind body experts say that stored emotions cause chronic illness healing comes from your release of the stored emotions remember you have accumulated so many stored emotions through your thoughts you should find them and that may be anything fear anxiety anger whatever that you have to release you have to forgive many people you have to let go of so many things you should not worry that is how you are releasing your mind then only you will have soul prosperity so for all these stuff the emotions you have to ask god forgiveness first and cast them out fill them with the new thoughts you have to do that for your soul prosperity dear friends do this and see that your soul is prospering when your soul is prospering things will change in your family things will change in your personal life things will change in your personal life in your education in your marriage in your future life things will change when when your soul is prospering many of your problems are because of your soul sickness because of the starvation of soul food that's the reason you are going through many sicknesses and many problems so i wish you all a speedy recovery of your soul sickness let's close our eyes in prayers